Hello guys, I am Yatin Jeet Kaur and I am in 4th year and I am an inspiring mind student and here I am with my new video on internal genitalia. So what structure come in internal genitalia that are uterus, asthmus, cervix and fallopian tube, vagina and ovaries. So generally the uterus is having the fundus, body and the body is further of two, uh, divided into two parts, the body proper and the isthmus. And there are three layers present in the uterus, that is the endometrium, perimetrium and the myometrium. And endometrium is of further two types, that is striatum functionalis and striatum visalis. So, generally the striatum functionalis is do, uh, what is the important uh, important point about it is generally during menstruation functionalis will shed off whereas striatum basalis will remain intact over there and it helps in the regeneration of striatum functionalis further and the myometrium is having the three layers the outer longitudinal inner circular and the middle crisscross layer and it is supplied by the spiral artery so, what is the importance of this? Generally, the crisscross layer after the separation of placenta, it will constrict and it also leads to a constriction of spiral artery, hence the bleeding is stopped. So, that's why the middle layer is also known as the living baggage. As it helps in uh, controlling the bleeding. And now, there, there is one point I want to discuss this area this point is corno corno is nothing but is a part of the fallopian tube which separates the fundus and the body of the uterus so now what are the relationships with the uterus what structure are in the relationship with the uterus that are crown ligament fallopian tube and the ovarian ligament. You can remember it like by the name of RFO. And now about the position of the uterus. Generally, the most common position of uterus is antiversion and anti-flexion position. And an antiversion is nothing but it is an angle between the cervix and the vagina, which is 90 degree. And anti-flexion is an angle between cervix and the uterus, that is 135 degree. How you can remember is like that, V for virgin and V for vagina. And the question we ask you, what ligament is mainly responsible for keeping the uterus uh, in the anti state? That is in non-pregnant women, it is a uterosacral ligament, whereas in pregnant women, it is a round ligament. So just remember it like that. Now the isthmus. Isthmus is the part that is present between the body of uterus and the cervix. So what is the main, what is the main role of the isthmus? Generally, in the pregnant women, it forms a lower uterine segment and in non-pregnant, it is not having much importance. And generally, in the caesarean section, what we will do is, we will incise at this lower uterine segment. Like if it is a uterus and this is an isthmus, we generally do the incision over there in caesarean section. So that's why uh, the caesarean section uh, refer as the LSCA, that is a lower segment caesarean section because of this. And generally this, this uterine segment is forms after 12 weeks. So the boundaries is generally anatomical boundary above and histological boundary below. So anatomical, what do you mean by anatomical boundary? Anatomical boundary is like when the endometrial canal is changing into the cervical canal, then we, it, we refer it to as a anatomical boundary. Now what is a histological one? When the epithelium of the endometrium changes to the cervical epithelium. So this is about these hormones. Now, what is the blood supply of the uterus? Generally, the uterus is supplied by the uterine artery and the ovarian artery. And the uterine artery mainly, it divides into the two marginal artery, which further divides and gives arcuate artery. And that further gives radial artery, 
then basal artery and then the spinal artery so Generally, I will discuss here about the which branch supplies the which layer. So, generally, our arcuate and the radial supplies the myometrium, whereas the basal and spiral supplies the endometrium. So, just remember it by one mnemonic that is arm and base. A for arcuate, R for radial, and for myometrium base uh, that is basal artery s for spinal and e for endometrium for this you can remember it, the blood supply of the uterus now about the lymphatic drainage of the uterus lymphatic drainage as i told you fundus and the body are the two parts of the uterus mainly so fundus is mainly drained into the para-aortic lymph nodes whereas the body drains into the external iliac lymph nodes now we will discuss about some Cervix is mainly extended from the internal os and the uh, external os below. And one more thing, the part of cervix that is present inside and facing the uterus is known as the ectoendrocervix. Whereas the part of the cervix which is facing the vagina or outside is known as the ectoservix. Ectoservix and the Endosorbix. So as it is facing inside, so it is mainly made by the columnar epithelium. And what the columnar epithelium will do? They will do to the alkaline mucus secretion. Whereas the ectoservix is present outside, so it is made by the squamous epithelium generally for the protection. And now in cervix there is a zone that is a transformational zone where you will see the metaplasia the, or you can say it is a squamocolumnar metaplasia or it is referred as a squamocolumnar junction and this metaplasia is a physiological one and what is important about the transformational zone is it is a most common site for HPV infection Plus, it is a most common site for CA cervix too. Just remember it like this. And about endocervix, just remember, generally in Nalli para women, the endocervix is point like, like this. It is point like. And in case of Malki para women, it is slit like if this is a cervix then it is like something slit like this so it is slit like and now about the blood supply of the cervix and the lymphatic drainage of the cervix supply journey the cervix is supplied by the descending cervical artery it is nothing but it is a branch of the uterine artery and about the lymphatic drainage Sometimes, usually, I used to forget about the lymphatic drainage, so I have prepared one mnemonic that is I hope. So, maybe I can hope that you will remember it. So, I is internal iliac lymph nodes, as for hypogastric lymph nodes. O for obturator lymph nodes, P for para 
cervical nodes and E for external iliac nodes. So generally the obturator lymph nodes are the most common lymph nodes that are involved in most commonly involved in C cervix. And the paracervical, these are the central lymph nodes. As I told you, the central lymph nodes are nothing. Like if this is an organ and these are the lymph nodes, if this organ directly in lymph nodes is draining, then firstly, directly it is draining into this lymph nodes, then we call these lymph nodes as the central lymph nodes. So, if there is a cancer in the cervix, then generally the first side to be infected with this is what? The paracervical lymph nodes. So, they are the first side for CA cervix. And now about the fallopian tube. I just forget to mention one thing generally in case of local um, anesthesia for the epidural uh, epidural local anesthesia we generally uh, do it at the T10 level whereas for LSCS if we are going to give the anesthesia then we will go at T4 level. Now the fallopian tube. Well, open tube is 10 cm and it is having 5 parts. One is interst interstitium, isthmus, ampulla, then infundibulum, and last one is fimbri. I will draw the diagram so you can So if this is the fimbri, this is the isthmus, sorry, this is the interstitium, this is the isthmus, this is the ampulla, this is infundibulum, and this is fimbri. I will call it A, B. So generally, the interstitium is the narrow, first narrowest part. And it is also known as what? Anatomical sphincter. It is generally 1.5 cm and isthmus is 2.5 cm and second narrowest part and it is known as what? Physiological sphincter. What you have to remember is so interstitium hai, that is the last to rupture in case of ectopic pregnancy whereas isthmus is first to rupture in case of ectopic pregnancy. Now ampulla it is the widest and the longest part. It is a 5 cm in diameter and the site for fertilization. Okay. Now, the historical point about the fallopian tube is it is made by the ciliated. columnar epithelium and the and the fallopian tube is having particular kind of cells that is a peg cells the function of this peg cells is still not much clear but they are generally for the secretion and their secretion is rich in pyruvate so when there is an early con conception the nutrition is derived from that pyruvate so Peg cells are present there, here, and it will help in secretion, which is rich in pyruvate. So, in early conception, nutrition is derived from the pyruvate. And the blood supply 
फलोपियन ट्यूब ब्लड सप्लाई लाइक इफ दिस इज अ फलोपियन ट्यूब This is a fallopian tube. So medial two third is supplied by the uterine artery, and the lateral one third is supplied by the ovarian artery. So having the dual blood supply is what you think is it good or bad? so it is a bad thing why right? it is a bad thing generally when the the risk of getting infection is increases like uh, infections like pid or tb they will directly goes to the fallopian tube because they are having it is having the dual blood supply now about the lymphatic drainage lymphatic drainage of the fallopian tube like medially along the cornu this by the superior inguinal lymph nodes and laterally it is by the para aortic lymph nodes so how i remember it like am i for मीडियल में आई आता है और इंग्वाइनल में भी आई आता है एंड लेटर में टू एज आर देयर सो इन पैरा ऑल्सो टू एज आर देयर सो जस्ट रिमेम्बर इट लाइक दैट नाउ अबाउट सम इम्पॉर्टेंट पॉइंट अबाउट दिन ट्यू सो द मोस्ट कॉमन साइड फॉर फर्टिलाइज मोस्ट कॉमन साइड फॉर एक्टोपिक प्रेगनेंसी इज एम्प्यूला and also it is the most common site for tubal abortion and esthmus is most common site for tubectomy and the just mark star point is tb is generally it causes the bilateral cornual block where as the gonococci causes the bilateral femoral block mark it as a star point so guys this is about the internal genitalia thanks for watching our video please subscribe us on the youtube and please do follow us on the instagram thanks